I will now begin the assessment of the head and neck. First, I'll start with inspection. As always, looking, first I'll look at your hair, the color, the distribution, the texture, the size, and the shape, and the contour of your skull. Next, I will palpate the skull, the skull feeling for any lumps, bumps, or lesions. That's your normal occipitus. Next, I'm going to step back and move on to the face. First, inspecting your face, looking at the shape, the symmetry, any involuntary movements or ticks, any crusting in your eyelashes or eyebrows. So I'm going to look at your lids, see if they're puffy or swollen, any edema. Can you open and close them for me? Thanks. Um, looking at the eyelashes, seeing if they're crusty, seeing if the eyelids have any ptosis, um, slanting of the eyes, any um, uh, flakiness or facet fasciculation or redness. I don't see any. Then I'm going to now palpate. Starting with your temporal lobes. Moving down to your TMJ, trimandibular joint. Open and close for me. One more time. Thanks. Checking for any crepitus. I don't feel any. Now I'm going to do your frontal mac um, sinuses, you feel any puffiness or pain? Now your maxillofacial sinuses, any pain or pressure? Okay, now I'm going to move on to the eyes, the internal structures. First I'm going to look at them, look at your sclera, see if they're white, which they are, not yellow, meaning you might have jaundice. Then I'm going to look at the lower lid, I'm going to pull it down, looking at the conjunctiva, and the lacrimal ducts, the tear ducts, and it's nice and pink, it's not pale. Then I'm going to take my otoscope and I'm going to look at the lens. Open your eyes for me, please. Looking at the color, the size, the shape, checking to see if the pupils are both equal, round, and reactive, and they are. Now I'm going to look obliquely to see if I see any foreign bodies in the eyes. Okay, I don't. Next, I'm going to check your um, conceptual light. I need the light. Um, for conceptual light, I'm going to shine the light into your left eye and remove it. It should contract, shine again in the left eye, remove it, the right eye should contract. Moving over to the right eye, shine in the right eye and remove the light, the right eye should contract, shine the light again in the right eye, and the left eye should constrict. Uh, now I'm going to do the confrontation test. Um, check your visual fields. Follow my finger. Next, I'm going to check the six cardinal signs of gaze, starting in the middle, going up, going back to middle, going down, going back to middle, going midline, going up, coming back middle, going down, back to middle, going across, back, up, back to middle, back down, back to midline, back to middle. Good. Checking to see if his eyes were able to follow me. Next, I'm going to take, test the near test. And with that, um, I'm going to see if your pupils constrict with something near and something far. Um, look at something far behind me. Okay, then look at my finger. Then look at that again behind me far. Then look at my finger. This side. Something behind me. My finger. But I'm checking to see if his pupils constrict. They should constrict when the objects are near. And they should dilate when the objects are far. Next, I'm going to check his peripheral vision. See if he can see. Let me know when you see my fingers. I'm going to check superior. 
and anterior. Okay. Next, I'm going to begin the fundoscopic exam. I'm going to set the diapter to zero. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. And then I'm going to have you pick an object behind me. I'm going to come in at a 15 degree angle with my right eye checking his right eye, adjusting the, di adjusting the diopter and moving my head at the same time so I can come in. And I'm looking for redness, trying to follow that in, looking at the pupil, blood vessels behind it, way in the back. I should be able to see the optic disc, the physiologic cup, the physiological lens, the macula, the fovea. Okay. I'm going to take my left eye to his left eye so our nose is wooden above. And I would do the same thing, adjusting until I could see it. I'm going to save the Snell and I chart for last because I have to move the camera because we don't have 20 feet. Okay, next I'm going to do the ears. First I'm going to look at the ears with inspection, looking at the size, the shape, looking at the oracle or the penna, looking at the canal, looking to see if there's any drainage or any redness. And there isn't, so they look normal. Then I'm going to do the whisper test. I'm going to whisper something in your ear. I'm going to hold your ear closed, and then you'll tell me if you can hear it. Yes. Repeat it for me, please. Yes. No. Sugar. Sugar. Okay. Then over here. Apple. Okay, great. That's the whisper test. Next, I'm going to palpate. It's the tug test. I'm going to pull your ears. Up and back for a kid, I would pull down and back just so I could straighten it out. And I can see inside. I need my otoscope. Okay. Then I'm going to hold the pen up and look inside the ear. I'm trying to look for the tympanic membrane, the bony prominences, the umbo, the head of the malus. It's kind of hard to see. I'm looking for any bulging or redness or discharge. I don't see any. They look nice and pink. And the bony prominences looks opaque. If I had a tuning fork, I would do the Weber test. And you strike the tuning fork you put on the top of the head, and I would ask him if he could hear it. In normal hearing, he should be able to hear the vibrations in both ears. It's checking for conduction. The REN test, I would strike the, um, the tuning fork, and I would put it behind his ear on the bone. And when he could no longer hear it, I would move it to in front of his ear until he could no longer hear it. And that checks for hearing loss. Okay. Moving on to the nose. Next, I first of all, we always inspect and look at the nose, look at the size, the color, the shape. I don't see any masses, no deviation of the septum where your bridge isn't deviated. Now I'm going to take my otoscope again. Okay. I'm going to look up the nose. Can you hold your head back for me, please? I'm looking up the nose, looking for any redness. Looking for any polyps. Okay. Okay, I don't see any. Looking at the terminates, uh, which will bleed really easy, so you have to be really careful when you stick that up the nose and looking to make sure your septum isn't deviated and I didn't see any discharge. So now moving on to the mouth and throat. First I'm going to inspect again. I'm going to look at your lips. I'm looking for um, cracked lips, 
chapped lips, bit splitting lips, lesions, anything like that that looks abnormal and they don't, they look nice. I take my otoscope again. Okay, there we go. If you open your mouth for me, please. I'm going to look inside, look at your hard palate, your soft palate, looking at your dentition. Can you hold your tongue out for me and say ah? Ah. Okay, trying to see your tonsils. Looking at the uvula, making sure it's midline, soft and hard palate. Look under your tongue for me. Looking at your submandibular and your sublingual glands and ducts under the tongue, they look normal. Okay, moving on to the neck. First, I'm going to inspect your neck, looking at it to make sure the trachea is midline. I don't see a big goiter or anything, so far everything looks normal. There's no twisting or torticalis. Uh, no masses or anything. Next, I'm going to palpate. You can feel your neck. Okay. Check your lymph nodes. It's moving in a round circular motion. They should be small and pea sized. And they are. They're moving down. Those are the pre auricular, and then there's some behind the post auricular. Moving down. Front. Then you got the tonsillar that's under the neck. Then you got the anterior cervical that's above the clavicle. And then you've got the posterior clavicle that's right behind the sternocleidomastoid. Can you turn your head down a little bit for me? Can't really find yours. Then there's the deep ones, and um, sometimes you can't feel them because they're deep. Next, I'm going to feel your thyroid. Have you swallow for me? Okay. It's a midline. I don't feel any lumps or bumps. I don't feel or see a goiter. Okay. That completes the first part of my head and neck exam. Now we're going to do the snow and eye chart. That's the last part. May I have you stand for me, please? We don't have 20 feet, so we'll make pretend. I have to move the camera. Snell and eye chart is based on um, average population being able to see this last line at 20 feet and the increments go up higher as you miss a line, miss a number on a line. We have you cover your right eye and look at these, look over here at these letters. Can you read the bottom line for me? D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Thank you. Let me have you cover the other eye and read the line for me. D-E-F-P-O-T-E-C. Okay, perfect. And then both eyes. Cover one. Uh -uh. Look at them. We'll use both eyes. D E F P O T E C. Perfect. Now, if he had missed one, I would move up to the next line and have him read that line in either eye until he could read them all. And that gives you the numbers. So he didn't miss any, so that was 2020. 20. And the next one up would be 25. Um, it would be 3020. And then it would be. 40, 20, and the increments work up higher. This completes my assessment of the head and neck.